Good morning, video games. Welcome to Filthy Casuals, a podcast about video games hosted by three very kind and extremely knowledgeable boys. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Tommy Dasilo. With me, as always... Hey, Tommy Dasilo. It's Ben Vanell here on another episode of Filthy Casuals. Today, it is uh, Thursday, April 9th in Australia, the day before Good Friday, but I... I will be referring to it as Bad Friday in honour of the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> and a man who oh, is John Oliver's <laughs> joining us here. This is good stuff. A man who is just as good as that joke, if not slightly worse. It's Adam Knox. I will be referring to Easter Sunday and Easter Monday as No Thanks Meester Sunday and um, <laughs> Please to my, Fuck Off Monday. Okay. Please, to, please to leave. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, really good. Love and it. the Saturday in the middle will be uh, good Saturday, <laughs> <laughs> confusingly, because I plan to have a great day on Saturday. Mm. Me too. Got to try uh, and force yourself to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it goes without saying, and I'm sure everyone listening to this is across this, but uh, hope everyone's doing the right thing and uh, staying at home and not going out and not being sensible. Uh, don't... Don't go away over Easter. Yeah. Uh, don't be a fucking idiot. We, of course, uh, people will know this because we've talked about it in the past. We've had to cancel our uh, annual Filthy Casuals Team Building Summit. Um, <laughs> one of the highlights of my calendar every year, and I know you guys feel similarly about it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we've had to make the big sacrifice. So the least that you guys can do listening is to, uh, you know, take a pass on uh, on having fish with Nan this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm so annoyed that we've had to cancel that summit. We'll ha- not be able to do the the Filthy Casuals Getaway Obstacle Course. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I love doing that obstacle course, or as I call it, every, everyone in the way of the bloody mini bar. Oh. <laughs> That's the bloody obstacle course for me, mate. I, so it doesn't matter how good your alternate terms for Good Friday or Easter <laughs> Sunday or whatever are, you can't walk the streets yelling them into every house that you see. No, no. Uh, have you guys picked exactly. up any new hobbies in isolation? Uh, a, a dry cough has been one of my hobbies. <laughs> Running a fever, I've gotten really into. Yeah, yeah. I've just, I've picked up, or I've really developed a high level of anxiety that just does not leave me at any point yeah. of any day. Oh, right. Genuinely, nights. analyzing my nightmares has been a constant. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've picked up a real penchant for group sex. <laughs> now look. Take me down for that comment if you must, but, you know, you got to stay busy somehow. <laughs> you cancelled the summit, but you're still attending the group sex. <laughs> exactly. Okay, all right. Um, I've been cooking a lot more mm. and I've been drinking a lot more, but, I mean, the second one of them was pretty much on par with uh, mm. the real world. So, I mean, yeah, not too much of a We missed there. Comedy Festival when my drinking would have been at a, at a yearly high. So, uh, yeah. Right. I think I'm actually kind of down on those numbers, which is mm. what I've been. And mm. same with like junk food consumption. So I've been kind of telling myself that it, overall and also mental health wise. Yeah. I think all of, I think I may have said that last week that, uh, yeah, the, the bad food, the drinking and the appalling mental health mm. effects of uh, the coronavirus outbreak still pale in comparison <laughs> to what they'd be at, the levels they'd be at if the comedy festival was currently happening. So... And even though it's a nightmare at the moment, social media is less unbearable than it would be if there were a global comedy festival rather than a global <laughs> pandemic. Yes. Six, seven billion people all posting like, oh, nearly sold out last night. Oh, great right. show. They right. were quiet, rather, but they I'd, loved it. I'd rather read the joke about I've been self-isolating for years for the hundredth time than see one of those fucking little red sold out stickers Yeah, <laughs> every morning yeah. Although waking up. Although Steve Bennett gave me a really nice review of my illness on uh, Chortle. So, Great. You know, that's, that's, yeah, that's something. Yeah. Is the good review just he contracted it from you? That's <laughs> There's no better review of a virus that you have than yes. someone picking it up from you. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, thing that I, with the cooking, mm. I, so I, I went to the supermarket to get essential supplies uh, the other day mm-hmm. and the guy, one of the people working there, I overheard say they were having a conversation with somebody else in the shop and... Apparently, like, so you know how, you know, there's a lot of 
it's difficult to get every type of meat at the moment. There's a lot of things mm-hmm. at the supermarket that are gone. Mm. He was saying like, it's not even people panic buying probably. It's just, this is what all supermarkets would be like if people always cooked at home. <laughs> oh. Right. Because yeah, yeah, more yeah. people are doing more cooking at home. It seems as though th- that that is a large contributor to the, the lack of, uh, you know, things there, which makes sense because that's why all the pasta is fucking gone and all the mm. mints, mm-hmm. because that's all most people can cook. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Myself yeah. included. I struggle with the mints. Yeah. I guess you wouldn't. You're right. Or are you encountering any issues with buying your 12 packs of lube that you pick up every two days, Knox? I've had to cut back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is unfortunately what happens when I don't have enough lube as well. I <laughs> cut up the back. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, if, if you if you're panic buying lube, <laughs> listen. Please think of the more it. vulnerable out there. Like, think of the next person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. who's coming along got, after um, you? I got a I got a bottle of Bailey's delivered to my house on Uber Eats last night at ten wow. p.m. Because wow. my girlfriend felt like a nightcap and I was just like, wow, th- it really is a brave new world. Like, I, I never would have done this in the olden times. That should be an automatic conviction for <laughs> something. I don't even know what the crime is, yeah, but you should have police guilty, show up with the Baileys You're guilty your of being a 55-year-old single auntie, I think, is the crime. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boys, I got to tell you, it went, as we head into the colder months here, it went mm. down a fucking treat. Small little glass okay. of that right before getting into your jammies. Really, really good stuff. Can't recommend it highly enough. You made fun of me for drinking regular milk. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is like milk if it was cool and for adults. It gets you a little buzz, yeah. bro. That was my only issue with it. Milk is cool, and adults yeah. get allowed to drink it. Uh, so we talked about cooking a little bit. Uh, I would love to be able to refer to a game in my favourite video games franchise, Cooking Mama, you know, for ideas mm. and inspiration. Um, now, I swear that was on the eShop just a few moments ago. It appears to have disappeared, though. What's going on? <laughs> well, it's well, bizarre ben, that you just randomly brought this up, isn't it, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, it hasn't disappeared. It's been bumped so far down the list by 10 different clones of Plant vs. Zombies <laughs> that have come out in the last half an hour. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. You haven't heard of insert random noun simulator <laughs> now on sale for eight fucking cents. <laughs> Everyone's buying it because why not? Um, so what's the fucking story here? So did this game have like some um, some uh, Bitcoin kind of stuff in it? No. So it, it, that was uh, basically a rumor that blew up about this. There was right. a game, okay. Cooking Mama, and then some subtitle. I forget the subtitle. Cook Cooking Star. Mama. Cookstar. Cookstar. Yeah. So this game is a Cooking Mama game, but it was made by a different team to mm. the rest of the series. Planet Entertainment. Apparently. Right. And so it was like made in Unity and the quality was allegedly a bit lower. I haven't actually seen the game yet, but this is the explanation that I've heard is that the, the Bitcoin stuff came from some form of and apparently this happens with a bunch of games now and i hadn't even fucking heard of it before Mm. you can monetize you know how you can sell like um uh, steam cards and all those little extra bits of bullshit that you get in some games yeah, yeah, yeah 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 you can sell them on like a real life marketplace to make money this game had some equivalent of that where you were able to sell something that you made or earned in the game for bitcoin right right it didn't okay it also, it was a shittily made game, and so it like it, the it ran the switch a little more intensely than people expected it to. So the conclusion to which some people jumped was that it was mining Bitcoin because right. it was involved with Bitcoin, and that it was like spinning the fans up and shit. Right. Okay. Apparently not the case, but it was put up for sale and very quickly brought back down. Mm. Uh, I think the more likely reason for that apparently is that the company who originally made the cooking mama games basically effectively copyright striked this said Ah. we don't want it out there this isn't up to our standards and told nintendo that and then nintendo went "Ooh, a copyright strike here we go let's take it down let's take (laughs) everything down (laughs) yeah so i think that's the the 
actual story, but the Bitcoin thing spread very quickly. Right, because right. Because there were links to the concept of Bitcoin in it, but yeah, it it's looks a more like story. it was integrated with blockchain, which is like a Bitcoin wallet. So it's like it just was hooking up with yeah, p- being able to pay Bitcoin. It sounds like. Right, which is weird to fuck enough. The idea that there's a cooking mama game with <laughs> yeah. the word blockchain anywhere fucking yeah. near it is bizarre. Yeah. But it, it isn't the, the strange reason that this was put up and then brought down. It wasn't mining Bitcoin. It was it, it, it was either like some kind of copyright thing or a quality thing mm. or possibly some form of um, bringing back the digital release date because physical release is now an issue. Mm. Right, right, because it is. Bit, it's out, apparently you can buy it physically in some countries, in some stores. So they, they there were some pre-orders that shipped yeah. as well. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the fuck is pre, but whatever. So you were saying it was over. It was overworking the switch. Uh, I don't even know if that's the case, but it's right. anecdotal sort of. That like, was part of the oh, conspiracy. It, I mean, yeah, right. I know the switch is pretty low powered, but for a cooking mama game to be really working that fan out, like. <laughs> Boy, these cunnies must be pretty bad at developing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's like apparently a little bit shitty. Right, it, right, it is, it right. Chopped together in Unity and not not that it is, you know. Or it, it maybe is. it was like you know it was two like two D eight bit graphics for all the cooking, you know, the recipes and everything, and then the finished meal was rendered in photorealistic three D. <laughs> <laughs> it was like well, right way around four K. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Totally. Seeing a nice meal put in a... I still think about Final Fantasy fifteen and all the little fucking plates yeah. of shit that you cook at your yeah. campsite. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, it, and it could... All, it Again, in the, in the way the world currently is, the most likely thing possibly is that it was a supply chain thing. Somebody forgot to fucking delay mm. the launch of it possibly on the eShop. Yeah. And so it, uh, it wasn't done because the other big news that happened pretty much right after we recorded last week... Yeah. Was that that happened to The Last of Us Part 2. Yes. Uh, we might have even mentioned it on the episode as, you know, an upcoming game that we were looking forward to, but uh, I think we did. Yeah. yeah. Um uh, it's look, now that we've had like a week to sort of let it sink in, it's not such a emotional blow, but at the time it just felt like another in, you know, a series of annoying things that are <laughs> directly impacting my personal and professional life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I got to be honest, it's still, it's really, it is really surprising to me that they've, that they've delayed it, delaying it indefinitely mm. when I know that, you know, that their reasoning for it is that they want it to, they want everyone to be able to enjoy the launch experience at the same time. And I get that not everyone has the means to be able to get things physically, especially at the moment, or you know, or they don't want to get it. Their mm. internet isn't good enough to download it or whatever it is. Digitally, but I still think yeah. like, pardon? Digitally. Digitally, sorry, yeah. I, I just still think it's it's such it's such a shame with with everything at the moment mm. to have pushed it back when it's not it's not a case of not being able to finish it and have it done. Like people, yeah, people are really relying on this kind of stuff at the moment, and I, I, I think a little part of it too is when they kind of go, oh, we want everyone to be able to enjoy the launch experience at the same time. Like that kind of rubs me the wrong way because yeah. it, it's like this is finance, like this is you yeah. doing the numbers on the bottom line. I, I hate that thing when people trying to make it like movies were doing. Of like we want people to be safe and not have to go to the cinema. It's like no, you worried about it not making as much at the box office. Yep. That's all it's down to. Yeah. So that I, I don't know. It I just it's it's kind of a bummer because I don't really think it had to have happened. Uh, maybe, but at the same time, like I think they've said indefinitely because if they were to say November now, mm. maybe they could do it early. There was an interview yeah. with uh, Neil Druckmann, who's like the head of the thing. And he was saying, like, we're actually looking at everything. We haven't ruled out the possibility of doing an earlier digital release of it. Right. So who knows what's going to happen. But if they can't get physical copies to people, you know, it makes sense that they would want to hold back because if you launch it digitally and then the physical copies come out three, four months later, it's already it, it has lost some market value. Mm. You know, th- those physical copies yeah. are expected to go on sale after a certain amount of time since the game's been released. And I, I kind of agree that, like, pretending that it's not a financial decision decision it sucks. But, like, 
what are they going to say? Like, ah, oh, we're not going to make as much money. Like, they have to, they have to do that. And now more than you know, I, like, yeah, mm. yeah, you're right. Uh, I guess yeah. it's also like it, it was like I had just been thinking. This is kind of the first. Ben's <laughs> phone just. Oh, that's better. I'll just put it on the side. <laughs> there you go. I didn't know if my camera would flip around and you'd have to look at me sideways the whole time. That's better. That would have been pretty cool. <laughs> I'm looking at you um, sideways anyway. <laughs> I guess this is the first video game thing of um, coronavirus that's really been affected. Like it kind of felt like the kind of the one piece of media that was left that was sort of for the for the short term at mm. least immune to like well, you know people can't go to the cinemas people can't go to music festivals like there's no reason why these things still can't get into people's homes so i guess it was just a bit of a yeah i, I a bit of a blow to realize too like yeah yeah this is this nothing's immune like i think cuz we just seen uh doom eternal and final fantasy 7 remake get released I mean, one of them got released earlier, so it was sort of like, oh, yeah, it'll mm. impact the industry, but we're still getting the games, which is the most important yeah. thing for us especially. And I think, yeah, for that to actually be hit now is like, okay, this is going to suck. Yeah, it's like, you know, however they deal with it and whatever the messaging is, this is happening for reasons outside of their control. So I kind of yeah. don't have any problem with it or any, like... it. it Obviously, for whatever reason it has to happen, we're not owed a game. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. when it comes out, it comes out. I think it's just like really... I'm, uh, sure, I'm sure that they want it to come out as early as possible. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and totally. I believe them when, they're say, when they say that if they can make it work by doing a stagger release or whatever, then they will get it to people as quickly as they can. I, I do believe that because, you know, it's such a bizarre thing and I'm sure that they are across the fact that people would be absolutely up for it right now so yeah. it could make fun anyway yeah it was yeah it was such a bummer to see that thread in our facebook group and just see like yeah a lot of people like really really bummed you know just like yeah. more bad news people were really banking on this as a distraction as much of a distraction as a post-apocalyptic mm. um game dealing with large sections of society being locked down under infection can be at the moment but uh but yeah that was, that was just kind of a bummer to see the outpouring of uh yeah, people people bummed about that. Mm. Yeah, it sucks, but heaps of stuff sucks at the moment. So yeah, you know, yeah, puff of the course. Yeah, really, it, it's it's a shame that they had to th- be on the same pile. Mm. But uh, yeah, well, something to look forward. To, a couple of things to look forward to uh, for the future. There's something that you sent us, Knox. Um, <laughs> a a depiction of what uh, what we'll all look like in twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. There was some study done by some group of fucking idiots <laughs> uh, that I don't know if people have seen this. Has kind of been doing the rounds. I got this, so it's a it's a it's an image um, that was created of what gamers will look like in twenty years if they don't change their ways. Yeah, less fat than me for one thing, but also the <laughs> reason that I am seeing. <laughs> Uh, the reason I saw this is because my girlfriend sent it to me and said, "Oh, okay. W- oh like, my god! Hey, this is a warning. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, this is your. It's a wonderful life, but your this is your ghosts of gamers' future. Yeah. Oh wow. Fuck. I guess so. So to describe the the image, if you haven't seen it, first thing that's most striking: there's a front shot and a profile shot of him. Got a big fucking indent on his skull. Hmm. Mm. It's it's a render of a of a male uh, who has a caved in skull from wearing headphones, which immediately yeah. makes this completely fucking ridiculous. Yeah, uh, everyone already wears headphones all the time, yeah. right? Headphones aren't new. If that happened, if something that is on your head regularly could indent your skull, then everyone who sleeps would have a pill. Like it mm. is not possible. For any, there's no way unless you fucking club this guy with a brick, he you yeah. <laughs> cannot look like that. Yeah. Uh, I, wow. <laughs> Adam's the most fired up I've seen him in a long time, and he's only at the very top of the cranium. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, because every element of this is like he's got hairy ears. 
Yeah, he's got... Like, that's just something that happens as you age if you're a male. That happens to people. Very hairy ears. Like, only, uh, his hair seems to be, like, severely thinning except for the sideburn region. <laughs> right. Very bizarre. Yeah. Adam, you said... Uh, you said this. You said you're fatter than this guy. This guy's got more hair. That I'm balder than this guy. So <laughs> yeah. that's so that that's two of us of the pod that have been wounded by this caricature. Does it say and anything he's... about his social skills? Because he might have me pipped. <laughs> 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 no, nah, but he is. It does say here that he's five foot eleven. So sorry, Ooh, man. <laughs> fuck. Okay. <laughs> this this is the ultimate man. <laughs> <laughs> he's got carpal tunnel syndrome. He's got blisters on his fingers. Ooh. His his hands are all fucked up with arthritis, but they call it Nintendo arthritis. Yeah. He's obese. He's got a hunched back, which is bullshit because he'd have a gamer chair. So ridiculous. Yeah. Blood yeah. I will say, eyes, as we're looking circles. at this, it has made me keep adjusting my posture while I'm sitting here <laughs> looking at the image of yeah. it. So it's not. I mean, yeah, it's having I'm, a slightly beneficial effect in the current moment. I'm leaning further forward to like squint my eyes angrily at this alien fucking cunt like <laughs> I, it it is the most ridiculous over the top stupid thi- like yes if you remain completely sedentary mm. for non-stop for 20 years you yeah. probably end up a little unhealthy yeah but he knows that he's obese he could have bought a bigger t-shirt his t-shirt that's doesn't the- fit mm. yeah right that's mm. the two problems i have with it i don't see why being a gamer means that you have an inability to buy clothes that fit you. And also well, on that T-shirt, it says future gamer, which it, this is a depiction of a man who's in, like it should say present gamer. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's in the not future. like I'm the future gamer. He's in the future. It's mm. his present. That mm. is the one part that I think is actually pretty cool about this. Is <laughs> <laughs> that T-shirt. I would wear that T-shirt. <laughs> but I wouldn't have fucking stains on it when I knew I was... Po- he's got stains all over mm. his shorts. Like, why does he have to be a fucking grub as well? It's mm. well, what you know, what I think the big, the big question that this leaves unanswered, and uh, what I think is uh, a, a big oversight by whoever drew this. You got to give us a look at the hog, yeah. Because <laughs> if yeah. if he's packing a few more inches than I am, I got to say this <laughs> this the fucking sciatica and the the weird sideburns and the <laughs> and the big old dent in the bunts all worthwhile as far as I'm considered. Yeah. He's got PlayStation thumb, it says. It mm. says he's got Nintendo arthritis. But if he's got that Xbox dick, <laughs> <laughs> then suddenly suddenly that eczema-ridden arm isn't looking so bad. He's got eczema what, from stress. What's he fucking stressed yeah, about? Yeah, God. And what there's no... I, I don't mean this to come across as, like, you know, weird or xenophobic. This just is a genuine question why does he look weirdly mixed race? Like, what's yeah, the? I is, is that is, is that some like kind of gamer based implication? I don't get. I don't get that. His eyes I, are very far apart. <laughs> like he kind of looks a, like an alien almost. I don't know. He's very he pale. Yeah. Extremely pale. <laughs> and like Tommy says, it's weird to think that he might be mixed race. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't get what does that see. Is, what's that trying to say about the habits of gamers? I don't get. Mm. I don't get it. Is that just I, trying to? Is this just? Is, is this just an attempt to offend everyone? Oh, as, sure. To offend as much people sure. as possible yeah, who look at it. He's like, like he's a forty-year-old open micer. He just he's an equal opportunity offender. Yeah. He bloody hates right, so, everyone. Yeah. So I someone looking at black, it, they're like white, purple. <laughs> <laughs> He'd say that pretty quick. Make up some colour, yeah. Like, but any of the ones, yeah. That someone I don't looking at it would. going, <laughs> someone looking at it going. Well, you know, this is this depicts a white gamer in the future. But as a Chinese gamer in the future, I see no reason to believe that this <laughs> is how I would turn out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's fucking stupid, and it's yep. been made to deliberately be stupid. Clearly, and it's worked. We're talking yeah. about it. Yep. Good on him. Yep. Um, um, well, speaking of things coming up in the future, this one a bit more rapidly, yes. uh, Resident Evil 8 will release in 2021. Mm-hmm. Apparently, a, a very reliable leak, uh, according to all the reports of this, is that they were working on a game that was going to be Resident Evil Revelations 3, mm-hmm. and then it started testing really well with people who were getting early looks at it. And so they pivoted it to become the next proper one, Resident Evil 8. <laughs> it's uh, first person again, and it's going to have, like, witches and shit in it. Uh, okay. Instead, Interesting. As, or, as Instead, as well as zombies, I don't know, but it's mm. going to be more like sort of... Uh, 
I guess there's been a spate of horror movies recently that have been more supernatural themed, like yeah. it, witches and covens and uh, werewolves and did, that sort of shit. Did they also do a Blair Witch game recently that like was yeah reasonably well received? I think. I think so. Yeah, yeah. first person one. It was on Game Pass. I always meant to try it, yeah. but never bothered. But uh, yeah, I, is- I mean, it's no big fucking revelation. Excuse the thing to say that there will be yeah. a new Resident mm. Evil game. Mm. If that's true, that is strange of them to kind of be following the Hollywood trend of um, of witches and supernatural stuff being popular because I was reading up about the Resident Evil franchise this week and, like, the first one of them coming out did kind of kick off that new wave of sort of zombies and stuff being popular in media. Yeah, so, right. it's you know what I mean? It's kind of weird for them to be reactionary when, with zombies at least, they kind of did set a new trend mm. back in the day. Sure. Um, I, I, also, I, kind of a weird slight on the um, on the Resident Evil Revelations franchise. Mm. Like, if you have a franchise that if you start making one of them, and it if it's too good, it can't fit <laughs> under that umbrella. Just don't make Resident Evil <laughs> Revelations yeah. games anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I really liked Resident Evil Seven. I liked that first person style and uh, the the changes it made from the regular series. So I'm I'm all for it for the next one to go back to that mm. because yeah, I never played it. I think I'll go in. Both you and I, Tommy, now's as good a time as any to talk about this, have been playing Resident Evil 3 this week. Mm, and yep. I think it's pretty safe to say that, it, yep, they've they've done enough of that and time to move away again. Yeah, do you want to just go... Do we, do we, should we go into this later or do you want to go into it now? Nah, let's just do it now. Yeah, go into okay. it. Sure. Okay, so this, and I'm sure someone, if they can correct me on this, they will, who listens to this, I believe this is the first time in Filthy Casual's history that I have ever completed a game before in the week of release before reviewing it on the podcast. <laughs> now, a combination of factors, sure, you could say that COVID-19 <laughs> plays a plays a decent part in that. <laughs> sure. But I yeah. but it's kind of a co-production between old COVID mm-hmm. and old Capcom themselves. Yeah. Giving us a few very brief hours with yeah. this wonderful experience. So how long is this game? This it's like I I heard maybe three hours tops. Is that sort of around the mark? It was more like four and a half for me. Yeah, mine was five ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I took it pretty slow and tried to do everything. Um and it was it was a good four and a half hours. I enjoyed my time with it, but boy howdy, that's a short ass game. Mm. I personally am not, like, I, I actually didn't mind being able to get through something pretty quickly and get that satisfaction of knocking it off. Just and That's just, like, purely personal, my own selfish reasons. Mm. But, yeah, for a for a AAA that's, you know, 90 bucks full retail price, if you're someone that can't afford to buy everything and doesn't have the position of getting everything for a for a job that you do mm, yeah. like man that's fu- i'd be i think i'd be pretty pissed like i hate when people who play games whinge about the state of things or whatever but i would be pretty irked especially at the moment where you want stuff to last as long as it can so it was a, you've got this it's full price it's actually like 80 dollars 90 dollars australian it is it's a full price game but it does come with a multiplayer mode as well that was going to be a full game on its own called resident evil resistance that multiplayer mode isn't very good, <laughs> okay. so it doesn't really matter. I, yep. I played some of it, and I'm not super into it. The way the multiplayer works, just to get it out of the way, because it's not very interesting, it's four versus one. Uh, a team of four uh, survivors uh, playing through like kind of a Saw-style series of traps mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. the other player is like um, a mastermind placing traps and zombies and uh, you know obstacles right. for these people and then you as the four people have to kind of go through these maps and get whatever you need to get or do whatever you need to do to move on to the next one if you escape in five minutes then the four of you win if you hold them back for the five minutes then you win as the as the other one the master uh, right yeah so like you'll have time added on if you complete objectives as the four or you'll get to subtract their time if you uh, hurt them or whatever, if you're the mastermind. It's an okay concept, but uh, it's just, it doesn't ever feel like, I mean, it's obviously, it's meant to be uneven, but the the ways that you're competing don't really gel in a way that makes it feel like there's a real push and pull to me. Mm -hmm. Right. Like 
if you've got four of you who kind of know what you're doing and you run through, and when you're the four, you're playing in the Resident Evil 3 style of over-the-shoulder you know, shooting. You've got abilities and all that sort of shit. Uh, it's pretty simple to go through and win if you're the four and you know what you're doing. And if you're the mastermind, you can stop them, but again, if they kind of know what they're doing, you're kind of fucked. Mm. Right. But the second you've got someone on your team who doesn't know what they're doing, then they can fuck with that person and win. So... It doesn't really f- it it it, the, it doesn't hit any state where you feel like you're really uh, trying to outsmart each other, right? Because I think like, like the concept makes you go like, oh, cool, that could be really creative and complicated and teamwork versus you know like someone with the you know all the security cameras and knowing exactly what's going on. But I think the you think about it for another ten seconds, you realize. Oh, but it's constrained and restricted by what is available for you for you to use in the game to set up as traps and then to solve. I think that makes yeah. it probably way less actually appealing. I, do, you do, I, I haven't really fallen in, and look, I haven't played that much of it, so maybe at a higher level it gets to this, but it doesn't feel like you're ever trying to second-guess what the other side is thinking, mm, which right. is kind of what that gameplay suggests would be the point of it, right? Totally, to yeah. be trying to outsmart each other, but uh, it, it never really feels like that. It just feels like a um, kind of war of attrition until whoever is slightly better sort of wins but mm. it, it, it it doesn't feel very good it's not very satisfying it, it's a fun distraction it's a good inclusion or whatever to have for free in there i suppose rather than it being a full game mm-hmm. but uh it doesn't add enough to make this still a good value proposition if the four to five hours of the main game yeah isn't enough to satisfy you mm. i mean it felt to me like the inclusion of the multiplayer thing was just kind of like yeah padding out to sort of justify it being a full priced package and totally. similar in the same way with the second one like they seem to be pretty keen on you like once you've finished it the point of it seems to be that like they want you to go back through and have another run with you get these you get currency for stuff that you can buy in a little shop in the main menu um like to concept then, art and and things oh, like right. that well, but also you can buy stuff that like uh, that you then can use in your next playthrough of it. So like unlimited yeah. ammo for the guns and right. um, bluffs and Rocket stuff like that. And whatever. Yeah, yeah. To kind of, I guess, yeah, make it make it kind of more fun to go back through and be able to play through it or whatever. But uh, I mean, that's not for everyone. Um, all that being said, yeah, I I really I really enjoyed it. Like I had a fucking great time with it. It looks amazing. Mm. It's um, got all the same sort of cinematic stuff from the second one. It's a it's a much different style and pace to number. So I finished Resident Evil 2 Remake during the week as well. Mm. Like I, I started it the other week to kind of try and catch up before this came out and uh, definitely keen that I, you know, knocked it off before starting this and um, played them so close together. But it is it it feels weirdly almost like an epilogue to two. Yeah, they happen like at the same time, kind of. Or three is even a little bit before two starts, I think. But they're basically yeah. concurrent with each other as all the Raccoon City stuffs happening. And yeah, it it like it's very similar to the remake of two in the way mm. that it plays. Other than um, the fact that it does focus more on kind of action kind of more zombies are around, larger set pieces, sort of bigger combat scenarios. Yeah, right. Lots I of think, big boss battles. And I, I, I kind of found that a little less interesting than the tone of 2, which was a lot more kind of uh, smaller scale and more horror-based. Yeah. yeah, it was more based on like... T- there was a, it was a lot of corridor stuff, obviously, but it was like you're around this corner and now there's like two zombies and you trip over and now you're crawling away and it's can you shoot them? Like it was those right. smaller, very, very high tension moments from what I played of it. Yeah, well, and it was the, too, the bigger like, enemies as well were to be avoided and to be uh, right. kind of feared in a way that even this, with where it, with its main thrust being like this nemesis thing chasing you in the same way that kind of Mr. X did, mm. nowhere near as effective because he shows up at sort of predetermined times and the way that you avoid him is with like kind of awkwardly running around all the zombies that are there and around him in a way that just doesn't feel like it was uh, like it fits really in with the controls of this game too well. I agree completely. Yeah, he he shows up really early on and is doing sort of the thing that um, the Mr. X guy did in number two, where he kind of trails you around, 
And it meant that I couldn't really explore the early areas enough. Mm. And it meant that I missed, I think I must have missed one, if not two, of the inventory upgrade hip pouches that you get. Right. So I played most of the game with just the inventory space that you start with at the beginning, which made it really difficult as it got on. Like it kind of added a whole extra layer of challenge because I just, once a lot of the guns take up two slots in your inventory, so I kept having to store a lot of uh, like herbs and stuff and then go back for them in the in the storage containers. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of... I completely agree with you. Like, what I really loved about the second one was I, I just loved that it was this. For the most part, you're you're in just this one location and it's this very big, intricate puzzle where you finally get into a room and then you get a key for this other room and just gradually unlocking all the areas of this one central location. Mm. And this is a lot more spread out and a lot more just like, you know, you going from A to B, still having those puzzling moments, but I, I, I much preferred the kind of the intricate nature of of two and just that feeling of finally being able to get into this one room in the building that you haven't been able to access for the entire game. Totally. I, I kind of really missed that about two. It I still love this, but I would but personal preference two was way more my shit. Totally. This is still good and it still has most of the same positives as two. And there's, I think, like the sort of the third big area you go to is like this hospital and it brings back a little bit of that slowly exploring it on a smaller scale. Yeah. And I enjoyed yeah. that area the most. And then Same. it does like a, a, a big action sequence where it throws a bunch of enemies at you. And then it starts to fall apart a bit again because it's kind of stretching this game that they've made a little bit in a, further in a direction that it doesn't excel in with this like high um, intensity combat stuff that it repeats a few times throughout the game. That yeah. I didn't yeah. find as fun. That kind of horde area where, yeah, just these waves of enemies are coming in. I found that really frustrating because, yeah, you said this before, like the... Yeah, I'm glad it's not just me. Like, it felt like, yeah, the controls of this are really not made for this sort of style of thing happening to you. Like, I kind of frequently found myself being overpowered and not because I could go, oh, I've made an error, just because I was like, oh, this just doesn't... This just isn't... my, my, My... I don't have the skill set in my character doesn't have the skill the move set to be able to like right. weave and dodge around and get into the corners of the room and kind of cover the area quickly enough. And the game becomes weirdly uh, you trying to find a way around the limitations of the controls and the character mm. rather than getting into a position where you you feel like you're increasing your skill with what they're asking you to do or whatever. Mm. You're kind of fighting against the game in a weird way in multiple spots and especially during the nemesis chases yeah. where you're kind of awkwardly running through these um, some corridors or like bigger areas and it's not difficult to avoid him but it's annoying and it's not difficult to... Uh, dodge the zombies, but it it feels bad to do. I, it, yeah, that there are a couple of times of where didn't did, yeah didn't improve anything above two, and it brought it back for me. There are a couple of th- moments where yeah, I was trying to outrun Nemesis and just go like hitting the run button, and him still being able to take me down and kill me, and me going well, I'm just I'm not doing anything other than just what I can do. Yeah. Like I'm running, I'm running through this corridor. I didn't, you know, I didn't slow down for a second. Mm. I didn't like trip over a thing. I didn't pause to shoot him and that undid me. You clearly just meant to go as fast as you can and I'm doing that and he still fucked me and it just then took me a couple of goes to just like weave or I guess just like kind of get lucky with the AI, which is what it felt like or there will one be or two like, times there. There will be an exploding barrel or whatever that you're meant to shoot and so it draws it back into being this very linear chase sequence where you're kind of doing it like quick time events almost. Right, you just yeah. you're meant- off these things in, in a series yeah. of, yeah, right. It's it's asking you, oh, please guide him to this bit so that you can start. And it, it just, it doesn't have, uh, it, it, the, the linear style action game that they've kind of jammed the Resident Evil 2 gameplay into, mm. those two don't gel together well enough to make it anywhere near as good yeah. as two. Right, because something like Uncharted or The Last of Us even, which is probably a better comparison, the they they know exactly how to make those like narrative linear games. They make the choices or the instinctive things you need to do in those uh, situations 
like obvious or second nature because that's just mm. they know how to design those games. Whereas this yeah. it just sounds like no, you just got to do it for the first time. You obviously won't know what to do because there's no right. way to instinctively know. So you just have to do it four times and then finally you get it right. It sounds like, or you just feel as though you're even if you're doing it you know, right because you end up going through it. Mm. It just doesn't feel great to, you know, blow a whole bunch of ammo on this kind of larger open area of zombies because the the combat isn't satisfying in that scenario. Like you mm. can do it, but it feels like uh like a like a a, a something that it wasn't built for. Mm. It, it doesn't feel yeah. good. <laughs> Did you? Did this I'm annoy you? Adam, find, there's, it, a, there's a word there that, <laughs> that I'm sure exists. International somewhere, games journalist Adam Knox, <laughs> a uh, master not international. of words. <laughs> I live in one room. <laughs> <laughs> did this annoy you, Adam? Like the uh, one big change from two to three is that in two, if you get if if a zombie reaches you, you just kind of watch an animation of it, you know, biting you or whatever. Mm. And if you have enough health, then that's it. But this thing in three where the same thing happens, but you have this quick time thing where you have to, it, you know, it asks you to mash X and that never seemed to have any difference over the outcome of no, what was happening to that me. that fucker still bites you every single time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It I haven't re- really thought it about that, but that it, is weird. I got really annoyed at it providing this extra level of stress because it comes at, you know, it's often like if they've snuck up behind you, it's like, oh, fuck, I'm being bitten. Yeah. Oh, oh, fuck, I've got to push this button as quickly as I can. And then it still, it do- it doesn't, it doesn't affect anything whatsoever and it just started really to really annoy me <laughs> more so than just being overpowered. Like the fact that it's asking you to do this quick time event that has, that just adds extra stress and doesn't impact the outcome at all. Yeah. I wonder if yeah, you don't do it, if you just like die straight away or something. I haven't, I hadn't I really know. thought about it. And the fact that it wasn't in two when they're, you know, when they've made these, you know, back to back and mm. it, you know, in the same engine seemed really strange to me, but yeah, all of that being said, in spite of the fact that just sitting here being pretty negative about it, I did really enjoy it. I, I re- especially the opening moments where this big shift into it being more like a big dumb action film, I found really enjoyable. Yeah. Um, I, I really loved it as a follow-on to 2. I think if I had played 2 at the time, it would have been on my Game of the Year list last year. Um, I can't recommend 2 enough. It's it's great. If you haven't checked it out yet, then um, I'd say definitely go in on that. And if you're looking for a little more then hopefully you can get this down the line on sale or, you know, borrow it from someone. But I think at the moment, just unless you're really fanging for stuff to play, um, it's, yeah, at full price, it really is hard to recommend. Totally. If this had been a $30, $40 DLC type thing for two, which it's using the same engine, and Mm. it does have a lot of those same positives, to be clear. Like, it looks great. Mm. The campy story is fun. Yeah. The sections where you are doing, you know, the traditional-ish Resident Evil stuff of moving around the, an environment and solving puzzles and shooting some zombies and whatever or enemies. They're, they're, it, most of the game is very fun and I did enjoy it. I'm being nitpicky because it is a step back from a better game that came out last yeah. year. Mm. Yeah. Which is a shame and it's a step back in almost every way. Like I, the, the visuals are still good and the yeah. story is still the same level of dumb B-movie fun. But everything other than that, the length, the style of gameplay, the uh, the the interestingness of the scenarios, like you're reusing a lot of the same sort of things as to it, like in this setting and just in the the mood and everything. It just it it doesn't come close to being as good as two was at the time. Yeah, I do like the early moments were probably the most interesting to me, where it was like it was kind of thrilling after being in the this mostly one central location for all of two to be like out in the streets and have this it, it open on this big action sequence I was like oh this is cool this is a you know this yeah. is like a cool sequel thing where they've kind of ramped it up and it's opened it up and you're seeing a bit more of the world outside of just this one location um, but yeah over time I agree with you I did like the final boss fight probably a little more same than in two. It's got uh, and good again, ideas I feel in bad. There I feel like well. I'm so, I feel like I'm giving the impression that I didn't like it, which isn't the like yeah, I I loved it. I had a great week with it, but yeah. Yeah, I still had a very fun time playing this game and it's still very good, but like if Resident Evil 2 is firing at 100%, this is firing at maybe 50% or so, but Resident Evil 2 is great, so this is still good. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, but, it, but it, yeah, it probably isn't worth the full price. And the multiplayer mode, I don't think, is um, any reason to to jump in on it if if you're humming and hawing about whether the main story will be long enough for you. Oh, but I love humming and whoring. <laughs> <laughs> I think all this stuff as well, weirdly enough, is kind of exactly the same reactions that people had to 2 and 3, the originals back in the day too. Yeah, I've been wondering about that. Um, it's yeah, funny I, that I they, should... they've kind of remade the whole experience. <laughs> <laughs> Where people thought 3 was a bit too short, they thought the Resident Evil stuff was getting a bit long in the tooth and wasn't really working as well as before, like... It's all the same stuff, so I don't know. Maybe that has Well, I mean, it. yeah, they did do a big kind of overhaul starting with four, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, they've you can get four easily on every console uh, or device on God's green earth at the moment. But, um, I, I mean, I loved four when I play. You know, it's one of my... It stands out as one of my favourite games I've ever played. I, I would love to see them do, even though it is still quite modern, I would love to see a tweaked version with um, upgraded graphics and yeah. y- uh, slightly tighter. I'm sure the controls have probably aged a little bit. Um, it would be cool if that happened, although they're probably... They've probably run out of steam for the remakes at the moment. They did another poll in the same style that they did when they before they started working on three, where they asked people whether they want to see a remake of I think it was four and Co Veronica, which was the other sort of one alongside three that was going to yep. be three, but then they changed the name. Um, so yeah, you'll probably get your wish. I think they'll remake every game under the sun <laughs> every day forever. <laughs> yep, that seems pretty fair. Speaking of which, Ben. Yes. Uh, I think you've uh, you're a little bit way into one of those. Yeah, should we do this now? Do we want to pop off some more news stories and end with it? I don't have I don't want to say too much, but I have played a lot of the game you're referring to. There's a couple. There's only a couple more news things, and I think there's one that's a big, most interesting one. So yeah, let's talk about Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, okay. So uh, obviously, for a lot of people, this game is not out yet. I believe it comes out tomorrow. Is that right? Uh, yeah, in most Friday, yeah, yeah. April ten. Uh, but I got it a few days ago. Bad oh, the last Friday, time on, as yes, I call it. Yeah, on Bad I Friday. Came up with that. <laughs> it came. It it was delivered to our houses the last time we recorded on Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. So I've been yeah. playing it since then. I've played about eight hours of it, uh, which is almost half to maybe a third, if if uh, reports are correct on the duration. Um, fuck, it looks good. It's visually absolutely stunning like the i remember we talked about when we talked about final fantasy 15 when it came out we Mm. all loved the scale um the huge vistas and landscapes and the really really smart design in terms of just the visual aesthetic and it it's yep i don't know if it's all the same people or even you know any um in that sort of specific realm but it's yeah it's just as good in in ff7 remake the the sort of vision of like the the pillar and the plates, you know, when you're in the undercity um, is just like incredible. It's always this, yeah, in the background providing this huge and real sense of scale. The music is fantastic. It's better. Like it's better than the original. It's, it's really well orchestrated, really well integrated character. Like it, everything looks fantastic. The combat's really fun. Um, Mm -hmm. But boy, howdy, if the (laughs) writing is not a little weird, uh, characterization is a little strange, and some of the diversions it forces you to go on to pad out the length are um, interesting, to say that's, the least. <laughs> yeah, that's the main thing I've heard about it uh, in the couple of reviews that I've sort of had a little peek at. Mm. That the uh, yeah, the the padding out from a small segment of a bigger game into a full game is a little. Uh, yeah, dodgy. Yeah, it's not even necessarily the like the genuine like oh this is one area that you s- walked through in thirty seconds in the original and now you know this is an hour because that stuff mm. actually tends to be fine. It's like oh there's some exploring, some like Metroid style, you know oh you got to go back here or you got to like move this gate to get through here and move this bridge and you know like just yep. general sort of basic um, exploration stuff with a lot of combat as well. That's all fine because the combat's really fun and the you know the areas are really beautiful. It's more for me the story stuff, like the stuff they've added, right. the stuff they've tweaked and the stuff they've fleshed out to kill time is done in a really strange way. That, what is uh, the yeah. strangeness? Like what what 
like sort of inflating character traits that were like literally one sentence in the original. Um, it's honestly like, yeah, the tone of a lot of that stuff. Some of the characters are a little strange. Maybe this is translation stuff. Cause like, I know we've talked about that before with, you know, Japanese to English mm. stuff where there's sort of this odd tone that can feel strange if you're like expecting this perfectly flowing, you know, English language script. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, so maybe that's it. Maybe they didn't get to spend as much time on that or, you know, I don't know, but it's just, it's very odd. And I'm starting to, uh, I'm not sure if I'm coming to grips with it or if I'm disliking it more as it goes along. Um, I'm really curious to see what you guys think of it because I obviously am yeah. kind of just playing it in a vacuum. I haven't really been looking at reviews either. So I don't know if this is just me or, or a, like a taste thing or if it is genuinely <laughs> odd. Because to go back quickly to um, Resident Evil 3, I was talking to a friend of mine who'd played it who was like, oh, you know, I just kind of wish that they'd added a couple more hours of stuff into it to to kind of flesh it out and pad it out a bit. And it's funny because I, I don't really feel that way about it. Like, mm. I'm criticising it for being short, but, it you know, you can't say that it overstayed its welcome and there were no bits of it where I was like, why the fuck am I doing this? Right. Which it's funny that that's come out in one week and then – you know that people are like you know common criticism seems to be that it's a bit too short but it doesn't you can't say that it overstays its welcome and then this where yeah a bit of what i've read is that yeah it's just there's a bit of there's just a bit of niggly little added well, stuff that you you and i haven't gone in on it yet tommy we'll talk about it no. in more detail next mm. week but yeah from just the demo i definitely didn't like the more anime style compared to the original that the presentation has the, the turn that that's taken. Yeah, I I think like I posted in another f- video games group where in like it feels very anime ish. You know, there's a lot of over the top posing and a lot of dumb, crazy, like bonkers feeling dialogue. And uh, a friend of the show, Angus Truscott, just pointed out like you've described every JRPG, which is yeah. true. But it's also like that's not how I view. Final Fantasy 7 or 8 or 9 or like the other ones that I love like they have really controlled yeah. aesthetics like they're not over the top they have like clear sort of um, visual and even like story and dialogue aesthetics that are not crazy anime like there's something else that are slightly strange but yeah it's, I think I it also says a lot about the the kind of unique uh, position of you know it's something that is so familiar to you that you've played a bunch of times that you're you know very you're very passionate about it and then to have it yeah the, and that and that's based on a a quite like rudimentary simple design of it from mm. back in the day mm. so i think it's whatever direction it goes in it's always going to be weird seeing it fleshed out and seeing someone else's interpretation of what they think it being fleshed out should be sure right. And I much prefer that version of a remake. The original still exists and always will. Mm. And having a remake remake where like, yeah, some people don't like the version of Godzilla with Matthew Broderick, but some people like myself think it's the best one. <laughs> so <laughs> someone's going to take something out of this one. Uh, and like, hey, if, uh, if this gives us a great Jamiroquai song as well, <laughs> then I'm all for it. If Diddy can do a little bit, uh, if, if he can do something with the Cashmere theme song, the, or theme song, the, the song Cashmere. <laughs> it's not the theme sure song to the region of the Cashmere. Yeah. He'll be able to jump in for the for the second soundtrack. I, I, I am looking forward to playing this mm, for next me week. Me too. Yeah. And, I'm going to start uh, it as soon as we're done with this. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's uh, like, that's the thing. The, the visuals, the sound, um, like the landscapes and the environments are like what you would have dreamt of having as a remake if you were playing this, you know, in the 90s. Like it is a perfect upscaling adaptation of that original game. It looks incredible and it sounds incredible. It is the game aspects that I think will be the most interesting to pick apart when you guys have have played it next week. Yeah, we'll hunk that next week. But in the meantime, uh, just to cover up a couple little quicker news things that we didn't talk about... Mm. There was a really cool thing where somebody fixed the smoke in Super Mario 64. Did you see this? I No, yeah. you mentioned this before we started recording. T- what, talk me through every aspect of this. What is Super Mario 64? <laughs> Super Mario 64 is a 3D platform game that came out at the launch of the Nintendo 64. It's mm-hmm. regarded as nailing 3D controls for really the first time in a platform setting. Okay. And it had great visuals. 
uh, other than a smoke effect, which was just like this weird black kind of pixely mess that would run behind Mario if he was on fire. Right. That did look slightly different to the to the aesthetic of the rest of the game, but it looked, you know, it's early 3D graphics. Maybe this is just what they could do. Turns out they just mislabeled it in one of the files. There oh. are two different rendering methods and they labeled it as the one that it wasn't. When you change that, literally one four letters of code, if you change that in the source code, which they have managed to decompile this game... Mm and get into it, you change that and it fixes the smoke to look like an actual little rendered cloud. <laughs> Literally fall at just the wrong tag on one thing. and uh, Yeah, I'm looking at a screenshot of it here yeah, fixed yeah. and it looks great. Hey, Adam, can yeah. you, um, for the image for this episode, can you not use Resident Evil 3? Can you get this <laughs> screenshot of Mario with the proper smoke and superimpose the uh, gamer from 20 years' time <laughs> over the top of Mario? <laughs> <laughs> look, that's a good idea, but... No, <laughs> I won't have enough time. Maybe yeah, I can yeah. I can Photoshop it up for uh, you know for a few days from now. Little treat, yeah, let's show sure, a little we'll treat chuck it somewhere. Yeah, but uh, it, it's yeah, it's nuts to me that just this little tiny mistake. Yeah, it does look shitty in the original version. That does not look good at all. It's like a shitty half tone like paintbrush effect almost. Well, because the 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 version of. Um, the, the two different sort of uh, bitmaps or whatever that these are, mm. the one that they labelled it as is just... Uh, o- only takes d- degrees of intensity of one colour. Oh, right, right. So it interprets all of the information as just turn this pixel on, turn this pixel off, turn this pixel on. Sure, rather than a gradient, which you obviously need for smoke. Right, the one it's meant to be is like a proper drawing that exists in the... So, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm clearly a programmer from the way I described yep. that. <laughs> but, the uh, smoke in the old version looks like um, looks like it was drawn by Charles Schultz for peanuts. Yes, yeah, sure. It's, it's very like, scribbly. Looks looking. like Mario's butt is angry in peanuts. Uh, the, and the new <laughs> one is is very much a, a fun cloud. Yeah, a little Mario yeah. style cloud. Mm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the other the 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 big thing of the last couple of days was that uh, Sony unveiled the PS5 controller. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's the first controller that Sony have ever made that doesn't look basically the same. Well, yeah. the, I, the PS4 controller was a huge departure for me with the big rounded blobby kind of um, grips. I really didn't... I don't like the look of the PS4 controller and I don't really like how it feels to hold. Mm. So, I disagree. Yeah, I'm with you. It's not my favourite, but it's definitely my second favourite. Um, and I never had a problem with the older DualShocks either. I no. I basically mostly played video games for, you know, like 10 years on the DualShock 1 analogue. Um, and I just got used to it, I guess. Um, the PS3, uh, the DualShock 3 was, was like still similar to the DualShock 1 from memory. Like it's not wildly different and then yeah four is fine um right but this looks basically like a mixture of the dualshock 4 the xbox one controller Mm. and the switch pro controller it does right it's a it's a a mishmash of everything that's kind of out there Mm. um if you if you haven't seen the controller look it up um I, I reckon it's probably best to have it in front of you because there's no point in us. <laughs> Good advice, it. Adam. Good advice. That's that's the one option. If people haven't seen it, the one option available yeah. to them is to be able to look it up and see it. <laughs> well, my point being that we're not going to fully describe every element of it. No, but I will yeah, say we won't spoil the image for you. <laughs> I really don't like the look of it. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't. I mean, I don't like the white version. Um, I like the black version. And then the black version just looks almost identical to a Switch Pro controller. I think just the shapes that it's got, you know, the the little bits of um, the 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 left and the right sort of like sections, the sections, look, yeah, yeah, the curvature there, and just the general aesthetic of it looks like someone's like decent quality render of like here's what stormtroopers look like in my fan fiction of Star Wars. Yeah, mm. right. It's got. Some I'm just trying to. I hadn't seen the old black one yet. I'm just having to... It's like got this weird low-grade sci-fi look to it that I, I really just... I'm not into. Yeah. It looks like is it'll be... 
comfortable though and it's got all the functionality that you would want a controller to have you know it's got some clever ideas like having a little mute button right there because yeah. it's got a built-in mic and it's got a little mute button which is cool uh the light sensors are on the front rather than that big fucking block on the oh, back yeah, of the ps4 controllers too. so yeah. it's not going to fucking reflect into your tv anymore yeah 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 and i'm assuming that's a big touchpad in the middle yeah yeah it's still got the touchpad i don't know what the the light the light bar moving will mean for mm. the ps4 vr Oh, uh, yeah. Because yeah. I believe that uses the light to track it. It looks like it can actually kind of creep out from under the touchpad on the back there. So maybe it does still. Right. It's got USB-C, which is good. Mm-hmm. Hey, just nice. quickly, yeah. just quickly. The uh, I, I don't think, I think that picture of an all black one, I think that's a mock-up. Oh, is it I don't really? Think that's official. Yeah, that's just a mock-up. Oh, really? I th- yep. Are you, right, okay. I thought they did actually... Put I'll that just out as Google well, but maybe not. Dual in this in this black. thing that I'm looking at that you sent us, Adam, from the PlayStation blog, they only mention the white one. They do. I'm now. not sure. I mean, they'll the do they'll do from. other colors for sure. Right. But, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, I think you're yeah, right, I, Tommy. I think it's a. I think it's just a fan. It's just a fan yeah, okay. Photoshop. Yeah. yeah. That's just what it will. I mean, they'll de- as if they won't do a. Yeah. But maybe they'll stick with the stage. the dual color sort of configuration for a lot of them. The shoulder yeah. buttons look nice and thick. It, um, honestly, it looks uh, inoffensive, and I think it looks yeah. inoffensive because it is a. It's genuinely they've gone. Let's mix them all together, uh, all the existing ones, so no one's going to be able to use the controller as a reason to not buy a PlayStation Five. Right. I guess the yeah. only big difference between it and the other controllers is it still has the um, analogs both down the bottom rather than one in mm. place of where the D pad is, and those switched. Which oh, is yeah, a personal preference thing. Um, I, th- I don't really care either way. Yeah, I mean, I've been switching between the Pro Controller and the and the DualShock Four, like you know, every two hours <laughs> for the past three weeks, and right. yeah. I have not. I, I I just don't notice this this joystick placement at all. No. Yeah, whatever you're using just feels right once it's in your hands. Yeah. It doesn't really. Yeah. It's and again, so much of w- whether these are good is like the weight of it, and the. Mm, right. I mean, I d- I really like the Xbox controller, but I it's got it's got a bit of a the one I have at least has a bit of a, l- a kind of light, kind of cheapy plasticky kind of feel to it. Yeah, um, I, I think like all three of them are fine. I don't have problems with any of them, but I think that if I was going to nitpick it at the Xbox one, you I think it is probably that it's because it's like. It just uses what double A batteries or something. It's there's yeah, no yeah, yeah. heft to it really. The the elite one feels great because it's got like a chunky sort of metallic uh, right composure to it. But the um, other thing with this one is just that it looks to me like one of those knockoff third party like PS4 Ultimate Control. It has a bit of a Mad Cat's vibe to it. Maybe mm. just because it's new or whatever. Yeah, and it does look like that sort of we we've done a you can't sue us version of a PS4 controller here. I, I think but that's it what yeah, it is. Yeah. I think they've, yeah, they've done that for all of, for, for Microsoft and Nintendo controllers and smushed them into one. Function, functionally, it looks like it will be really comfortable and it's got a whole bunch of features in it, like the um, force feedback on the triggers and then mm. it's got like the HD rumble and whatever. So yep. yeah, cool. Good for them. Yeah. So what do you guys think about uh, this being kind of put out now in terms of, because I've really been wondering, I guess a lot of people have been wondering whether everything going on at the moment would delay the release of the next gen consoles, the, the Xbox and the PS5 uh, that are both due to come out at the end of this year. Mm. And I think it's kind of, I mean, does does them putting this image out seem to say to you that everything is on track or it does to me yeah, yeah definitely yeah well, and xbox um had and we've not really talked about it because there wasn't much interesting but they had an inside xbox thing and they're still charging ahead with the holiday this year release date yeah, yeah that's I think actually the most- come to think of it because we sort of yeah mentioned before recording like there's not much interesting in that inside xbox thing the only thing of interest was in this context, they did dig into the Xbox Series X specs again. They are right. still spruking this console. They're they're bigging it up. They're talking about how good it is, which absolutely speaks to both uh, Series X and PS5 coming out as planned. The most plausible yeah. thing I've heard on that is that it's 
too big of a steam train to stop it at this point. Right. And that the most likely scenario is they're able to produce a launch amount and then there's a shortage of them following that. Right, right, right. right. That um, would make sense. Because there's been like a shortage of switches because people have snapped them all up and Nintendo have said, we're making more, but obviously, you know, fucking hell. Yeah. So, I yeah, I, yeah, I would imagine that it's just too big of a, um, a process to really put the brakes on it for this year, but that... If you want one at launch, get get your pre-orders in more than likely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's but also, if you want one at launch, explain to me why <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I mean, like, PS4 Because I host a video out. games podcast. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, all consoles are sold out. I, 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 this isn't just, like, uh, the Switch doing booming sales. This is everyone in the world wanting a video games console. And if yeah. you're pr- yeah. about to launch the new one, I, I reckon you'd be pretty comfortable in thinking that you're going to sell out of all the ones you make. I don't think they're going to be like, oh, no, we ordered too many. We're going to be, you know, overheads are too big and we're not making money back. I Surely they're mm. they're going to be fine in terms of selling it. Yeah. I, like, I'm not... I don't run a multi-million dollar company. Let me just say that up front. <laughs> and I've never been in any way involved in the manufacturing of any sort of physical product ever in my life. Mm-hmm. Big of you. However... <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say that if they don't go ahead with it at this point, surely they're sitting on a whole bunch of, uh, you know, processes and components and whatever the fuck they need to make these things that is just gathering dust for them until they launch these things. So they just kind of have to make it work at this point, right? Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. surely they've already spent all their money. Like they've bought all mm. of these parts. They've put the money into this production process. They got to make that money back. Yeah. As a counterpoint to what you were saying before, Ben, about... Um, yeah, any any retailer would be thinking like we'll sell out of these new consoles immediately. Mm. Is it you know it, maybe it's possible that a lot of people because by the time these next gen ones come out, it's end of the year. People seem to be thinking that life would be back to normal by then. Mm-hmm. Let's assume that that's the case, and let's assume that while people were in lockdown, a lot of people bought consoles that didn't have them previously. Maybe they were going to hold out on a PS5, but they went, fuck it, I'm locked up, I'm getting a PS4 now with a bunch of games to keep me occupied. Mm. So does that maybe hurt them when the PS5 comes out? Because a lot of people yeah. would have been waiting for that. They're like, no, I just bought that PS4 a few months ago to help me through lockdown and I've now got a big backlog to cut. You know, it could it it kind of could go either way for them, really. The way that launch stuff goes, though, I would say that anyone who's jumping in at launch, it, they're, unless, you know, they don't have the money to do it, obviously, their choice mm. of whether to get it or not isn't going to be affected by the events of this year. Yeah, I, I completely agree, Nox. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that a launch um, budget is taking into account casuals. Uh, I, for sure, I, for yeah, sure. I think, and they want to yeah. launch as early as possible because of that. Because the quicker they launch, the quicker they get into the next generation, and the sooner they can start selling these consoles yep. to those other people down the line. Because if they don't launch this year, that means that everything is pushed back. They've got to wait yeah. until another holiday next year, more than likely. Yeah. So yeah. it it fucks them for like a decade, yes, potentially, right. rather than just for the next few months. So yeah. I think it'll right. probably those will happen. And CD Projekt also said that Cyberpunk's coming out this year, and nothing's changed on that at this point. So just worth pointing that out too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Th- that's the thing. A lot of industries can only survive a four-month delay of their actual <laughs> normal processes. Otherwise, they might right. as well shut up shop entirely. It seems because like. whatever whatever happens with the time frame and the scale of how all this pans out. V- like things of this size will have to adapt. Yeah. Right. Mm. And whatever form that takes, like at some point sport will adapt anything. That's a big industry. There's not going to not be sport. Mm. They will find some fucking weird unused school gym <laughs> to play it in. <laughs> yeah. And they will lock the doors and they will say, all right, I guess basketball, you've got to be a meter and a half away now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Th- they will find a way through all of this stuff and hopefully it doesn't last for as long as, you know, it might. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we Just, uh, better actually, wrap it up. Since we're talking about it too, playing Resident Evil 3, the second word that is said by any character in that game is pandemic. Yes. The yes. first word Oof. is the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's definitely 
with this and with Last of Us 2, should that have come out on time, there is really a tangible element of going like, oh, can I be fucking bothered here? Mm. I know, mm. yeah. But Resident but Evil 3 sp- is silly enough that it, it went away quite quickly, that feeling. Speaking of which, one thing that I really didn't like about it was the live action intro. Yeah, really weird. Doesn't come back up, but there's a whole yeah. bunch of live oh. action shit in the style of how that happened with the original. So I think it's like a nod to one. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, that um, was. I found that kind of jarring. Okay, and poor acting across the board. We um, yeah. we we all I think really enjoyed the live action stuff in Control, but it sounds like it just wasn't done well in this. No, it's just campier. The whole game is is you know as with all the Resident Evil games, B movie aesthetic. So, yeah, it's fine. Um, all right. That'll do us for another week, guys. Thanks very much for joining us. Head to filthycasuals.com.au for links to all the stuff that we have going on. We have a Patreon where you can subscribe and support the show and get a bonus episode every week. Uh, we also have a Bandcamp page where you can get these premium episodes that we're doing. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much if you're someone who is monetarily supporting the show at the moment. Uh, otherwise, thanks heaps for listening and uh, thanks for the messages that you're I- enjoying this and it's uh, helping keep you sane. Seen a lot of that stuff mm. kind of in the inbox at the moment. Hope everyone's staying safe. Uh, hope everyone's staying inside and being sensible and uh, doing the right thing. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week with some hefty Resident Evil, uh, sorry, Resident Evil Final Fantasy VII remake thoughts. Oh yeah! Uh, and as we say here at the end of every episode of Filthy Casuals, if the future gamer T-shirt don't quit, I mean don't fit. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I got that dent in my skull. That's why. That's why it didn't work out for me there. I've got that future gamer dent. <laughs>